Two months ago, I took me and my team for a lean factory tour right here to Seaton Matters, a company in Limavady, Northern Ireland that makes specialized seats for hospitals. Today, in this video, we're gonna give you the chance to go behind the scenes and see how lean manufacturing and lean concepts and principles can radically change how you run your team, your culture, and your personal life. Check it out. I'm gonna show you something that's incredible. It's probably the best improvement we've made in the world area in about five years. We learned a long time ago that dual ownership is no ownership. Oh, if we have two people in charge of something, really nobody's in charge of it. Once we take this bin and we've used all these parts, we'll pull this bin to the front and the next bin is right there to use until the new delivery comes in. When I started in here, I used to have to bend down and put the charger underneath in here. Now, if I'm coming to change the battery over, so it's sitting at the right angle where I need to, so right. go like that. Straight away, <laughs> it will only fit one way. So the the, uh, the jig is actually the expert, yeah. not the person. Be honest with me, okay? So even when you first came here, yeah. you're not just like, these guys are freaks. Still, even even the now, I still think they're a bit mad, but <laughs> it works. So. We're part of the madness now. We're <laughs> part of the madness now. <laughs> So Ryan, I've been around loads of different businesses before and I've never been in a room like this. Like there's a gym in the corner, there's all these things up on the wall. Like what is this room and what happens here? This is our morning meeting area. Every single morning we have a meeting with every single person in our company. The meeting normally lasts about 15, 20 minutes. But the main thing is that we're starting every single morning with an improvement mindset because we're teaching and training on lean every single day. You're investing as a business, like you have a big team. You're taking every single person out of the business for 20 minutes every single day to do yeah. that. What's the, the benefit of doing that? Th that was one of the biggest things that we had to try and get our head around when we started doing lean. We had lots of ideas for how we could improve things, but people would say, I don't have time to improve. So we realized, okay, this is a bottleneck. So we actually give people the time to improve. First 15, 20 minutes is a meeting. Then for 30 minutes, we improve with every person every single day. So we're, we're going around making improvements, maybe making a place for your tool, making a holder for your drill, maybe 3S in your area. So every single person is improving every single day. And it wasn't until we took that leap of faith and done that, that we started to get really good results. That's a big leap of faith, like an hour a day, yeah. really, that you're you're investing. Before the work's even begun, uh, yeah, yeah. that's different, because I know in the businesses I've looked at, it's just like, how do we get as much time out of our people as possible? And here you are the first hour every day. Yeah. You're not even making stuff. Yeah. Mad. <laughs> that's right. We always say we improve, then we work. But when we do start work, we're really efficient because we've invested that time in the morning to set us up for the day. So Ryan, what on earth is lean and why should anybody care? Yeah, <laughs> good question. So lean is the elimination of waste through continuous improvement. That's basically all it is. If you're to sum lean up in one sentence, that, that's really all we're doing. We're eliminating waste by continuously making small improvements every single day. And why should anybody care? Uh, well, I'll maybe go back and tell my story and our story uh, eight years ago. Uh, this place wasn't running the way it does today. It was chaos. It was an absolute mess. There was orders going out late. There was a really high staff turnover. We had loads of production issues, loads of staffing issues. It, it really was a, a stressful environment to work in. Um, I was going home really stressed every night. And one night I went home and I said, there has to be a better way. And I went on YouTube and I started typing in all really generic uh, terms into YouTube. And I came across something called Lean. And it sparked something that night that has never went out. And that's that's eight years ago. Wow. And what you've seen here today uh, during your factory tour is evidence that, that Lean absolutely works. Yeah. So just to like make it really concrete and clear, like give us a few examples of like how lean has transformed your business. Yep. I think a really easy, clear uh, example to, or proof that lean works is our lead time to our customers. You know, lean is all about serving the customer. Um, lean isn't about the visuals and the clean floors. And although that stuff is nice and it helps, it's really about serving the customer. Mm. And uh, like our competitors lead time and our in our marketplace, in our industry, is six to nine weeks for a specialist chair. We can manufacture a chair in three days. 
So that's if that isn't enough to tell you that Lean works, I don't know what <laughs> oh my is. My goodness. You're um, like Amazon. <laughs> Only for like a really bespoke product. Yeah, and we have a really complex product and really complex procedures. And we've just challenged the normal thinking and said, why does a customer have to wait six to nine weeks on a chair? Well, let's figure out a way to make it in two or three days. Wow. And that's exactly what we've done. Unbelievable. So we're here in the woodworking department and you'll notice two really strange things here initially, right? The first thing is that there's absolutely no sawdust on the floor. I don't know if you've ever been in any, like a carpenter's workshop or something before, the place is flying with it. And the other thing that you'll notice is there's a whole bunch of people in the background here that are wearing these high-vis vests. Who are these people? What's going on here? Yeah, so we've got a tour here today. We do lean tours every single day now actually. And companies come from all over the world to see how we've set up uh, the factory and how we've implemented lean. So why is this place so clean and who's this guy behind us? This area is so clean because Paddy 3S's every day. First thing we do every day is sort, sort out any of the tools, any of the equipment we don't need. Next thing we do is sweep or clean. But we're not actually sweeping, we're cleaning to inspect. We're cleaning the floor to see there's dust, but why is there dust? There's dust because there's a hole in the pipe on the extraction, so we need to fix that. Uh, we're sweeping to inspect that, oh, there's a loose wire, let's fix it. We're sweeping to uncover abnormalities. Then the third thing we do is standardize. So we say, okay, this is exactly where the tool goes. This is where it goes back to every single time. So sort, sweep, standardize. This is where we'll make all the wooden parts for the chairs. Uh, a few years ago, before Lean, we used to subcontract this work. And they actually had five full-time people doing our work. And because we've taken it in-house and because we improve every day, one person, Patty, runs this entire place by himself. Wow. Yeah. So how can Patty do the work of five men? Our whole ethos is continuous improvement. Anything that stops flow is the opportunity, is an opportunity to improve. So if we're struggling, we stop and we fix it and we make it better for the next time. So it's just the accumulation of small incremental improvements over the last few years has led to the level that you're seeing here today. And we're really eliminating the waste out of all the processes. Okay, so I'm gonna show you an example of why we're so efficient. It's because we do improvements like this every single day. So this is Patty, and Patty is about to make what we call a lateral, it's one of our parts. So Patty just goes ahead and does the before. So this is before how we used to do this. It was really inefficient. Lots of movement, lots of motion, lots of transportation, getting all those tools. Lots of struggle and strain. You can see Patty's armrest, he's really struggling to put on those inserts. It's really not a nice task. The task doesn't flow, it's not easy. So we always say work should be easy, and it should. You shouldn't have to go to work and struggle through your whole day. So anything that we struggle with, we stop and we fix it right away. So this is, this is before. Okay, so what Patty's gonna do now is show us the after video. So we've got our two laterals, I'm gonna go ahead and make it. Go ahead, Patty. So as you can see, Patty's using one drill instead of two drills, because he's actually adapted at the end of the drill to be able to hold the insert and the bolt, so it saves time swapping over different tools, which is brilliant. So you can see the wooden parts are going into a jig. The jig's held in place. It takes a lot of strain, a lot of stress off Paddy's arm. It makes the work really, really easy and effortless. So as you can see, it's flipped over now, so there's no struggle, no strain. There's total flow, the metal bracket fits in the place, and Paddy's now gonna put the bolts into the part with the same drill and the same drill bit that he was using for the metal inserts. And it's done, Dan. One of the things that's really stood out to me today is just how every single person in the organization is constantly making improvements. Like, how have you inspired a team to, to have that sort of ownership? We talk about the three E's, every person, every day engaged. And that's exactly what we've got here. Every single person is making improvements all the time. And they're all engaged in the process. It's not like it's me and three or four others going around uh, suggesting all these improvements. Every single person is empowered to do that. And the reason that is, is because every single person is a process engineer. And their entire job is to improve the process. So our accountant, for example, 
or accountant Kerry, Kerry's job is not to do the accounts. Kerry's entire job is to improve the process of doing the accounts. Wow. Uh, somebody in the welding area isn't the welder. They're actually paid to improve the process of welding. So our entire job, from we come in the door in the morning to we go out, go out the door in the evening, is to improve the process of manufacturing chairs. It's not to manufacture chairs. Wow. And th- that shift is massive if you <laughs> think about it. Um, similarly, we have no cleaners in the company. We just have no cleaners. The place is spotless. It's sparkling clean because every single person keeps it that way because we've improved the process of how we keep the factory. It matters. We're paying people to improve the job. We're not paying people to do the job. And that's a massive shift. Uh, and most companies, they're paid from, you'll hear people saying this, they're paid from the neck down. At Satan Matters, we're paid from the neck up. We're paid to think. We're paid to be creative. Because it's one of the biggest wastes, the wastes of un, unused or untapped potential. It is the biggest waste, I think. And to have a company full of really talented individuals but not tap into your into their genius, mm. I think is a huge waste. I want to say, I saw this earlier, this wee red black gear. Yeah. What's going on here? Like, what's this all about? So this is total ownership. You'll notice in every single piece of equipment, the forklift, the heater, the hoover, the every single piece of equipment has a total ownership label attached to it because Patty has signed this to say he has taken total ownership of this equipment because we learned a long time ago that dual ownership was no ownership. Oh. If we have two people in charge of something, really nobody's in charge of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So total ownership was a massive mindset change for us. And that's why the place looks like it does, because every single person has signed to say, I have total ownership to the point where they believe that they actually own that piece of equipment. Wow. Yeah. Brilliant. I mean, I just wish that my uh, shoe rack at home had a piece of total ownership. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why is there two bins of everything here? Yeah, so this is what we call a two bin system. It's something we implemented about four or five years ago. So basically the front bin is the bin we're working out of. Okay. And the bin at the back is our backup stock. So once we take this bin and we've used all these parts, we'll pull this bin to the front and the next bin is right there to use until the new delivery comes in. So we basically take this Kanban card, it's basically an order card. We drop it in to get ordered and a few days later, the stuff comes. <laughs> yeah. So like, the way I'm thinking about this is, so a problem I have at home, okay, is you run out of toothpaste and then yeah. there's no toothpaste. So yeah. if I had almost like a two bin system for my toothpaste, when the empty tube is finished, yeah. I then would take the empty tube downstairs and then say, right, I need to put this on the shopping list or whatever. It's the yeah. same thing, is it? I think the key thing here is that we have one part-time person managing all of our inventory. <laughs> and you know, for a company our size, that is not normal. Most companies would have two or three people in an office managing all the stuff. We have one part-time person because we've made the system and the process so easy. Something that's kind of become legendary in the local area and across the business community is this company WhatsApp group you have. Tell me yeah, about that. Yeah. <laughs> so every single day, uh, people are posting videos of their improvement. So it's part of our culture that we'll take a before video of the current state, we'll make an improvement, improve the process, then we'll take an after video and we'll put the before and the after in our WhatsApp group. And the purpose of that is to share all of our ideas throughout the company. It's a Japanese concept called Yokoten. So Yokoten is sharing ideas laterally across the organization. So if Annie in accounts does an improvement, uh, JB in design might see her improvement and say, oh, I could do that. Let's, let's go down to Annie and see how she done that. So we're sharing ideas all the time throughout the entire company. And you know, there's, some days there's 20, 30 improvements on our WhatsApp group. <laughs> you just keep scrolling and scrolling <laughs> and you wonder, do you never run out of improvements? But the fact is that, that we don't. Yeah. And the more you see waste and the more you get lean, you actually see more potential for improvement, not less. All right, here, um, come with me one more second, okay? Bye. Hello. Hello. Do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Yeah, of course. So what's your name? Aaron. Nice to meet you, Aaron. So, Genuinely, like, I just want to get, like, an honest flavor of, like, what's going on here. Mm-hmm. See all these improvements. Yeah. Is it not, like, a real pain to have to, like, always be doing that on top of your regular job and all that sort of stuff? See, at the start, I was like, how are you going to come up with improvements, like, every week? Like, I was like, oh, my God, this is a lot of pressure. But then 
I started and this actually here was my first improvement. Okay. This was like um, a plank of wood before and it had like an iPad and this phone. But like this year I was like, oh my God, like it looks so unorganized. Like I felt the <laughs> pressure. It was like just lying on my desk. And I was like, right. To see when you start looking around, like you're picking up all over the place. So I was like, right, I need to do that. So I then made this and then you're always looking out like that group chat have you heard of the group chat yeah 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 so, it's the craziest thing I still don't I didn't believe it until he actually showed it to me I feel popular sometimes like it's just dinging all the time <laughs> and then um, when you see people putting it in you're like oh my god like I need a like I sort of want to one up them do you know what I mean like it's almost like I, I see it as a competition yeah personally but I'm very competitive <laughs> so no it's not a pain like it's actually it's actually fun in a way because you're trying to see what you can make better you know how you can make your day better and it's 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 good I like it you have a strong reputation here right <laughs> for being the top improver like the Michael Jordan of improvements <laughs> what do you think I think you're right uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes and he's got the confidence come on so Al and I were chatting there right and we were like is it possible that like you come in here as an employee and there's like so much pressure and like this huge amount of expectation like oh no I've got to be doing an improvement every single day like is it like really competitive how do you deal with that not really you know it's obviously day to day stuff you know I come in every day and I know I'm getting the chance to make my job better yeah you know what I mean so you know there's not many companies that actually do that you know you're get, getting the command you're getting the do 3s and you're getting the do improvements like even by making small jigs and things, you know, just make, you know, taking away all the struggle or burden every single day. And, you know, you can home at the end of the day and you're not tired, you're not knackered, you're, you're not killed. You know what I mean? So you know, I can manage and hear my own. Yeah. But that old boy stay getting the chance to improve and making your job easy. Uh -huh. So that's not... Plus, I'd be very competitive as well. Oh, yeah? I, if somebody puts in two videos a day, I have to make sure I'm putting three. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'd like to show you this just before we move on. These are the names of all our delivery drivers, the external delivery drivers. So, we really think it's respectful to use somebody's name. So, when Pat, for example, comes in to make a delivery, yes, how's, yes, Pat, how's it going? It's making that real personal connection. So, we've got all the delivery drivers' names right here. It's really respectful to, to use a person's name. And you know, these outside guys, they love this. They love the fact that their photograph is up in her factory. <laughs> you know, they, they feel at home here. They come and they use our facilities. They get a cup of coffee. And it's really being respectful of mm. the outside contractors, the outside suppliers, and in this case, the outside delivery drivers. I heard one of your team, I think it was Allison, say oh, something like, you'll be able to, to crack me on this, but it's like, wherever you're asking the question, the answer should be there or what yeah. was it wherever you ask the question that's where the answer should be perfect yeah. so yeah. like here we are like the delivery bay is right there speaking of allison hello <laughs> and you know if i'm working here and i'm like oh flip me like what do you call the guy with the glasses who yeah. is he who is he just immediately boom and then i can go in and be like oh ricky what about you how are yeah. you da -da 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 -da. <laughs> so i think that's class yeah really cool idea and very respectful is, and yeah. that, that culture is very, I think that's pretty radical actually. Yeah. And if you go back to the essence of lean, that's where lean all started with the Japanese. It all started with respect. Mm. It's not respectful to not deliver the product to the customer. It's not respectful to expect someone to struggle through their work all day. So let's make it easier. It's not respectful to send a delivery late. It's not respectful to not use the, mm. the delivery driver's name. Yeah. So this culture of respect is really deep rooted in our culture here at Sick Matters. And how cool as well, if you know, every single time, you know, these guys look down at their docket or however it works, they're like, oh yes, going to Sick Matters today. Yeah. That's cool, <laughs> that's really cool. It is, yeah. So far, we've seen a lot of lean in action in like manufacturing environments. Yeah. And that's always what I thought lean was. It's like, oh, it's just for people that like work in a factory. I run a digital business, so all this sort of stuff, I'm just thinking like, how is this relevant to me? We're about to go into the office here, the accounts department, yeah. and how, can lean work in that environment? Yeah, there is a misconception, a huge misconception that lean can't be applied in the office, and we've challenged that thinking and hit it on the head. And uh, you're going to see an office that is running four or five companies with very little people. Uh, it's really efficient, it's really lean. We're using all the same principles that we're using in manufacturing. We've brought that into the office. So for me, lean works everywhere because everything's a process. <laughs> and every process can be improved. It doesn't matter if you're uh, making your breakfast in the morning, if you're manufacturing a chair, if you're sending an invoice, everything's a process. Mm. And every process can be improved. Yeah.
Okay, so we're in the accounts office and this is Annie. And Annie and the team here have really transformed. I this. actually recognize her from the Lean Made Simple videos. Do you? Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> like the short. There's a short of you doing with Stream Deck or something. I was like, unbelievable. But sorry, we'll get to yeah. that. <laughs> Very good. So Annie's going to show us how Lean can be done in the office. For us, what we do is we try and take anything that's a long process that we're doing over and over again and automating it. So we can take a 15, 20 minute process, take it down to two minutes. And that's how we're saving our time. And the big thing that we brought in is Stream Deck. And what we do is we take processes. I can actually show you. This one takes a 10, 15 minute process, cuts out all the manual work and does a process for me without me actually having to do anything. See the mouse movement on screen there by itself. That's scary. <laughs> so that's our invoicing completed. And I've, I've been able to talk to you. I haven't had to do anything. Uh, how long would that have taken before? Before 10, 15 minutes at the end of every day. Loads of room for error in it. And now we've eliminated all air and it's 23 minutes. Mad. So what other wee buttons are on here? Because this is mad. So for this, you can program virtually anything that you're going to do is similar. So for example, processing um, emails. If you're doing the same email over and over again, it writes out the email for me. So the only two bits of information I'm putting in is the date and the amount because that's the only value that I have for the customer. You can pull off reports from it. You can open shortcuts to websites. We have a program that all these are actually wee photos. So we actually have the director's faces on here. So it's a visual control. We, if it's for Ryan, I can click his face and it opens off his file. Another thing that's really stood out to me, like just even chatting to some of your people, is they're having a good time. Like yeah. <laughs> there's smiles on their face. There's good good crack, as we said, Northern Ireland, good fun, like a lot of laughter, a lot of good banter. And... It seems to me like people don't feel criticized. People don't feel attacked. Yeah. You know, there's constant improvements going on, but no one feels like they're emotionally being targeted or something like that. Does that make sense? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Every single person is empowered to make changes to, to their workstation, to their work area, to their job. They, they feel encouraged. They feel inspired. They feel empowered that, that they can make a change because in most companies, you, that's not encouraged. Mm. What we're doing is not normal. Especially in Limbavati, Northern Ireland, it's not normal for companies to act and think like the way we do. Uh, it was a big uh, culture shock at the start when we implemented this type of thinking, but now it's just normal. It's just how we think. Wow. Something we always say is attack the process, not the person. So if we make a mistake, we don't even call it a defect. We call it an improvement opportunity. <laughs> so language is very important and, and the use of words is very important when you're trying to grow and develop a culture. So an, an improvement opportunity right, right away turns a defect on its head. Defects, mistakes are seen as a negative. Improvement opportunity is seen as a positive. So before Lean, we had loads of examples of people making a defect, producing a defect, and trying to hide it before one of the managers would come around because they didn't want to be <laughs> shown to make a mistake. But now you'll find two or three times a day somebody will make something wrong come to their leader, come to their manager and say, actually, I made this wrong, but I've got an improvement for how we can make it better so it doesn't happen again. Wow. So we have a blame-free, problem-aware culture. Wow. Blame-free, problem-aware. We're not saying we don't have problems and we're not getting to the bottom of them. It's a blame, blame-free. blame We're not blaming anybody, but we're really aware that we have a problem, but it's turned into a positive. How can we make this better? How can we improve the process so that it doesn't happen again? Yeah. So we have 60 plus people making improvements every single day to improve the process and, and, and eliminate, eliminate waste. It's amazing. And like we, we all have that experience of like getting chewed out by a manager and feeling terrible and feeling so small. And like what you've just laid out there, where it's like, it's never the person's fault. It's the process. Yeah. And that, what that must do to company culture is unbelievable. Yeah. So this here is like the fabric cutting department or? Yeah, fabric cutting, yeah. And then all this above the workstation, what are all these things? So these are all the templates, the fabric cutting templates. So uh, they're all labeled, they're all in their place. Every single chair has its own template, its own label. We know exactly where everything is. So when Donna reaches up to get it, it's right there. There's no struggle, there's no burden, there's no running around for five minutes looking for stuff. Everything is right where you need it at hand because we're very aware that time is the most valuable currency. We're always trying to reduce time, reduce effort, reduce burden out of all of our processes. It's not the leaders going around making all these improvements. Every single person is making improvements and they're actually empowered to, to do that every single day. Wow. Yeah. Donna, this here, this here we've been here. 
When did you get this sliding? That's pretty cool. So at the end of the day, you were like, we brush it and piles and piles of material. Like, why am I doing this for? So I asked the question, is there nothing you can do? Put it on the roller. So whenever you're finished cutting, all you have to do is slide it down, through the back. Just everything's so handy. Templates exactly where you need it. Yeah. Blades exactly where you need it. So if I need to change my blade, my blades is here. That's where my old blades go there, so they get in there. They're all comfy all there to say exactly if this here's full, where I go to Plus. empty. Okay. And a wee place for your, your water bottle. Because <laughs> yeah. that just debug me, I just fall down, fall on the ground, and I said, get somewhere to put it. We're in the sewing department. Yeah. And again, I'm just struck with like how organized everything is. So you've got all this stuff up here, you've got all these bins. What would this place have looked like before, Lean? Eight years ago, this place was an absolute disaster. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not afraid to say that, it really was. There was material lying everywhere. It was really disorganized. We didn't know where anything was. All the, the materials were stored away in a different factory, about, about 200 yards away. So wow. we were walking back and forth. There was just so much chaos. The contrast from then to now is just, you, you can see it here now, but we've got the standard work with the pens in place. We've got the total ownership, all the materials here. The two VIN system is all here, right where you're using it. This is the example board of all the templates that we're making. This is the machine that sews the belts. The tools are right here. The on and off button is labeled green and red. Well, we can make a belt in like 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. It's unbelievable. It's like those who remember watching like programs on TV for like arts and crafts. It's like, here's one we made earlier. Uh, <laughs> it's like you can actually just reference it. And it's like, okay, I know what I'm doing. I see what I'm at. Yeah. Something we talk about a lot is that this is the worst it will ever be. So when we buy a new machine, a new piece of equipment, we always say this is the worst it will ever be. So when we bought the sewing machine, straight away we were improving the sewing machine. So if you see the detail right here, we've put an extra spool holder here, we've put it on wheels, we've made a holder for the zip, we've made a holder for the elastic, Madeline's made a place for her zip heads, we've got a holder here for the labels, we've a place for the screwdriver, a place for the scissors, a place for every single thing. We've actually extended the table to have a bigger work area. So when we buy a new machine, a new piece of equipment, we always say this is the worst it will ever be because we continually improve it. Yeah, I'd like to show you this as well if you come close. So the standard work for the position for all the labels is right here. The thread color chart is right here. So we know exactly what color of thread we're sewing with what type of fabric. We've got the armband, what's got a cutting list here. And even the drawer, look at the detail in this drawer. Every single thing has a place and everything's labeled right down to this. Uh, we're only like halfway here. My mind is like literally blown. I don't know what else there is to see, but there's couldn't be more than what we've already seen. But here, come on, we'll figure it out. All right, so I want to show you this, right? We were walking past here. I came across this, look at this, come here. It's literally like, I know it's just a bunch of tools and foam, but it is so beautiful. I was like, you need to throw that up on Instagram. You literally have a place for every single bit of the tools. You've got a holder for the drill on the side. And I just like, I don't know why, I just like love the feel of that. It's so, so nice. And you imagine you're working here, like you've got all, every single bit that you need. You know exactly where your tools are at any given time. So like, I just wish, I wish my desk at home looked like this as well, you know, unbelievable. I was admiring your, the battery charging station here. I was like, mate, yeah. this is genius. So you've got the different brands yeah. and then this just really easily comes off straight into the drill, yeah? Yeah, so before, when I started in here, I used to have to bend down and put the charger underneath in here. Okay. Whereas now, if I'm coming to change the battery over, so it's sitting at the right angle where I need to, so right. go like that. Straight away. <laughs> so it's just, you know, it's, very, it's just very simple. So it's the same for all our chargers, and they're all labeled as well. So it just stops any, obviously, burden or struggle again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And er everything should flow. Thank so, goodness. you know, just very simple. Class. Something mm. so satisfying about that. <laughs> and up there, oh, look at that. Like a green, there's a wee green like leaflet stuck onto the, the machine there. It's just like your mantra. And you know, <laughs> if you ask yourself just, just a simple question, what bugs you? There's loads and loads of things. And you know, that turns into an improvement as well. Alistair, it's literally our job to go around companies and interview them and see them. Have you ever seen anything like this? Yeah, and nothing like this. Like I've been in, in factories making all kinds of things, you know, everything under the sun, shooting videos, and I've never seen a, a place as organized and as, as lean as this. So where's the last place we're going? Yeah, so we'll go to the welding area now, and I'm going to show you something that's incredible. This only happened uh, the day before yesterday. 
It's probably the best improvement we've made in the wel welding area in about five years. Serious? Yeah, so we've created a new standard for all our welding jigs. Right. All our welding fixtures. And uh, they're all color coded, they're really visual. It's really, uh, it's really incredible, I'll let awesome. you see it. I'm not a welder, right? And I don't really understand too well how it works, but this here is unbelievable. So what is this and how does it work? Yeah, so this is what we call a welding jig or a welding fixture. So it holds all the metal parts in place to allow us to weld it to the correct size and spec. And uh, it's really good. If we want to weld the part and turn it, we simply turn the trolley, weld it, turn it again and weld it. It's okay. It was a really nice stage one improvement, but uh, we've made it better. Okay, show me. Yeah. Okay, so it? over here. So this one is our new one. Uh, this is the first prototype actually. And it's interesting because all the ideas for this welding jig came from the guys doing the welding. Okay. It's not me running around making all these improvements and coming up with these ideas. It's the guys who are actually doing the work because they know, they know better than me. So with this one, we've standardized the trolley. They're all color coded by product. So this is orange, meaning it's a new Sorrento 2 chair. Okay. Uh, the other ones will be blue, meaning they're uh, Phoenix chair and whatever. So it's really standardized the way that we have organized the jigs. So we've got this torch holder on here. We've got the earth clamp on here. It's all flexible. We can take this anywhere. Oh, wow. So any welder can make this flexible to his work area. Yeah. We can also turn the jig really easily. So it actually slots into place. And it kind of clicks in. Yeah. It's really nice design, actually. So before the whole trolley move, and if I was a welder, yeah. I'd have to kind of, you know, kind of awkwardly turn around like this. Can I try it? Can I turn yeah, it? Yeah, try so it. So I yeah. literally just like stand here and I yeah. just turn it around. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There's something so satisfying about that, isn't there? So one of the main things about this jig is that it's pokey yoke. We call it pokey yoke. Right. So it's a Japanese concept uh, called, which, which means mistake proofing. So we can't, we, the jig doesn't allow us to make a mistake. So this steel will only fit in this slot. It will only fit one way. So the the, uh, the jig is actually the expert, yeah. not the person. So it's like a welding lazy Susan that saves people a lot of time. Exactly, yeah. I love it, so cool. I wanted to get someone who's not like front of house, someone who's behind the scenes to actually like really get to the heart of what's going on here, right? Definitely. So be honest with me, okay? The interview you first came here, yeah. you're not just like, these guys are freaks. Like what What type of a weird place have so, I walked into? <laughs> on this, it's, it's something that Ryan often asks me on tours, um, nearly because of how honest that I am. But when I first started here, I just, I couldn't get my head around the whole thing. And I, I had says, my partner works in the office and I had says to her that I'm giving it two weeks and that's it. Um, <laughs> so once I started buying into it and sort of get into it and realized then the culture of everybody, the culture they have up here and getting the, to realize how how easy, like Ryan's paying me to make my job easier. Still, even even the now, I still think they're a bit mad, but it works. So. Well, you're part of the madness now. <laughs> I'm part of the madness now. I'm up there with it. So you're like, you and your and your missus, like, are you just like the super lean couple? Like, you're really Not efficient conversations? Not at all. Uh, never lean ends at five o'clock. That's, that's it. <laughs> Ryan, we've seen so, so many things today. Like, my mind is like, totally blown like i can't even really process everything that's coming at me right now yeah. but for people watching who've maybe just come across lean for the first time like you they were typing something into youtube and they want to get started what would you say to that person or what would some of their first steps be so i think if someone was really starting today watching this uh, thinking of starting on their lean journey is really fill yourself up with as much knowledge as you can on lean Watch videos on YouTube, uh, read a few books, and then get started. And it really takes someone who's really passionate to keep this going because lean is hard work that makes everything easy. It's not an easy thing to implement. It's really not. But the, re the results at the other end far outweigh the investment. W what I done when I started on my lean journey is I went to see other companies. I went to Japan, I went to America, I went to Germany to see what, what's this whole lean thing about. So the best thing I think someone can do is get out and see another lean company. Actually see it happening in practice. You know, we do tours all the time and people are welcome to come and see what we're doing. But actually physically seeing in practice really fast tracks that learning and will be a boost to anyone's lean journey.
So yeah, hope you really enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. And no matter where you are in the world, you can book a tour to bring you and your team right here to Limavady, Northern Ireland, to do a Lean Made Simple Tour. It's been a massively transformative experience for me and my business. I brought my team here last month and it has radically changed the way that we do our business. It's changed our team culture. And I have to say, it's improved my family life and my family culture as well. So no matter what stage you are at on your lean journey, whether you're just getting started or you've been doing lean for decades, I highly recommend coming and seeing this place for yourself. You'll learn so much more than what we were able to show you in this video. And it's a lot of fun as well. So thanks so much and good luck with the rest of your lean journey.